Oh, hey, Sue. How you doing, Sue? I hit, I hit go live early. <laughs> you know, if it's not one thing, it's another with me. I hit go live early, so we are live, 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 live. Um, yeah. Hi. How is everybody? I'm very excited. We're gonna talk about um, embroidery on with cotton thread because a few things have come to light for me. Should I move this? You know, I was setting up. <laughs> I was setting up and I hit the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah. Fudge. So if you're here, say hi so I can see you, hear from you, love on you. We are live, live, live. Live, live, live. Um, do not disturb. That's what I was hitting on my phone. Hey, Francie Jo. How you doing? Can y'all hear me okay? I believe I have my... Oh, I'm. You, you might not be able to hear me that well. Let's see. I realized this wasn't plugged in. That means that when I did my class earlier today, it wasn't plugged in. Hey! All right, we are live, we are live, we are live. I'm going to, we'll do a little song and dance for a minute and then see who all shows up and joins us since I'm going to have to do a song and dance for even longer. I like to wait a minute and I I'm early. I'm never early. This never happens. Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. <laughs> Don't tempt me, Sue. I will do it. Adjust this. I think that's a little better. You get to see this mess over here, but there's a hammer. There's the drink I was drinking. Don't tempt me. I will absolutely sing and dance because that's how I roll. So how are you doing for those who are here? How are you doing? How's your evening? How's your week so far? Um, let's move these guys. And let's put some orophil over there. Woohoo! This is all about the orophil today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have had an eventful day. Oh, that's interesting, Sue. Sue, remind me where you live. I know it's Canada. Um, I don't know if you want to, maybe you don't want to share beyond saying Canada. Um, Sue says she's doing good. They now have a stay at home order, but you can congregate outside. I mean, you know, I'm in Florida. They gave up with rules the second they could give up with rules. Northern Ontario, eight hours north of Toronto. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, so are you like at the North Pole, basically? <laughs> hey, everybody. I see more people showing up. Hello, hello. I went live super early by accident. I was trying to check and see. I was going to make this look nicer. There's a mess right there. I was going to make it look nicer, and I hit go live by accident. So we are. I'm looking at Toronto right now, Sue. So. Holy mackerel, Sue. So you're. Far up there. Okay, okay, maybe not that far up there, but you're still pretty far up there. I'm gonna say. Hey, Tori. Yeah. I'm live. Can you shut your door? Oh, yeah. All right. Tanisha, how are you doing? Francie Joe, how are you doing? 
at least two more weeks. And Francine Jo, remind me, I know you're like mid. Are you Iowa? Are you Iowa? I know your deal. I know your Bernina dealer. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, at least two more weeks until restaurants can serve indoors. Outdoor dining is an experience. Yeah, because it's cold where you are. It's finally at a point. We had the opposite problem, right? The cat spilled coffee everywhere. We had the opposite problem. It was really hot. So it was too hot to eat outside. Now it's nice. Michigan. Okay. Um, now it's nice to eat outside. It's like 56 here right now and windy. I'm good, Tanisha. I'm good. I'm good. Man, it's not even eight o'clock yet. I hope D shows up to see that I did this so freaking early. <laughs> I'm always Grand Rapids. That's it. I was thinking of, um, I had it backwards. I had it. I was thinking one in Iowa, but. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Say hi if you're here. I would love to, even if you pop in and out, just say hello. I'd love to know that you're here hanging out with us. We're talking Orifil thread. I have had some developments on the front of Orifil thread um, in my machine. You can see that the 880 is still parked. I'm working with my 790 baby these days. I love her. She's so good. She's so good. <laughs> I forgot to tell Brad I'm live. Hi, Jean. Yeah, Jean's over on the west coast of Florida, so she's not that far away from me. And yes, it is getting colder. I was outside when it started raining here, and um, it... I was outside with Alfred and I was like, Ooh, <laughs> I don't want to be outside for 56 degree rain. So hello, 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 did some pink makeup today. <laughs> I basically went on a walk and then I did make some new videos for y'all, just some quick ones, but I basically put on this makeup to go for a walk and then come hang out with y'all. Um, my week was eventful. Um, yes, good eventful, partially. We just had some eventfulness with neighbors that is not fun. Um, so that wasn't fun, but everything else is really good. I have been working with somebody to help me create a really great content calendar for y'all so we can execute on that. So that's wonderful. Um, yeah, it's been good. I've been really tired. You know, I've been tired. Am I the only one? <laughs> I can't be the only one, right? It's like watch a little bit of news, get tired. Don't watch any more news. Hi, Kelly. How are you? So say hi, if you're here killing time right now, um, killing time right now for a couple more minutes so we can let people show up. I was super early, so we've just been shooting the breeze. I mean, really, I should probably, going forward, I should probably uh, open the live early like that so we can get started at 8. So say hi. Oh, I see people showing up. Being out in cold weather zaps my energy. I can see that. I can see that for sure. Um, I feel I feel the opposite. I feel like I'm super excited about cold weather, but I think that's because we don't get it that much. You know? So I soak it in while we've got it. Do, do, do. I was putting a bag on her shoulder, so we have some more. Oh, y'all, I went to Ikea. For the first time ever, I've never been to Ikea. Went to Ikea with a mask on. I kept hiding. I, I'm assuming you're not supposed to do this, but I kept hiding in corners and just breathing, like with pulling my mask down. And I was like, I'm assuming I shouldn't do this. 
but I made sure that nobody was around <laughs> so I could just breathe for a second. <sighs> I don't go out ever, so it makes me a little claustrophobic, but got to keep people safe, you know? All right, we have 12 of you, 15 of you here right now. Got to say hi. We're going to get started in just a second. Grab your drink, grab. You don't need really a pen and paper because there's a blog post about it. You can if you want to. Um, but get ready. Get ready and say hi. Say hi. If you're joining us later um, to the live already in progress, you can actually get uh, behind us a lot. So if you're watching later, go ahead and pull the... Um, I can't think of what that's called, but go ahead and make sure that you're watching live just because then you might get a little confused with comments and it'll be all over the place. But hi, Lynn. Hi, Christine. Hi, Minerva. Hello from Texas. Oh, this is so great. I'm so excited. Yes. Um, the blog post is in the description. And I just realized that I don't know if I hit i don't think this has the edits to it yet i'm just realizing that i think i have it in drafts um this is the blog post about embroidering with cotton thread there have been new developments as i have embroidered with different machines recently and realized that my carefree sort of it's no problem go for it you don't have to do anything different that's a little that's a little incorrect so we're going to talk about it. We going to talk about it tonight. Hi, Eileen. I'm good. I'm doing really well. How are you doing? How's everybody doing? Let me know how you're doing. We are going to hit, um, in a recent live, we talked about this lipstick that I got. So for anybody who is on there for the Trixie Mattel, this is called Stacy's Mom. And how cute is this packaging? Oh, stop it. Stop it. Good to hear it, Eileen. Good to hear it. So I put, um, oh, and I think I can pin this. Oh, let me write something. Check out more info here. Getting used to a different, oh, I fudged it up. You guys, the learning curve is real. Check out more info here. <laughs> Thanks for being going on this journey with me. Now I will pin this. I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. Um, yeah, let's get going. It's 8.05, let's do this. So if you have any questions, um, go ahead and put them in the chat. Anytime you have a question. Just go for it. Also, um, it doesn't have to just be about embroidery with cotton. Ask any questions about uh, uh, machine embroidery that you have. We skipped last week. We're doing it this week. We are talking about machine embroidery with cotton thread. And I guess the first thing I want to say is you definitely want to be... Um, you definitely want to be using Aurifil. I have two different weights of Aurifil here that I use. I can't promise anything if we are not using Aurifil. Um, this is the brand I have used. It's the only cotton I have used in my machine. So really when I say I'm talking about embroidering with cotton thread, I don't mean that. I mean, I'm t um, giving you tips on how to embroider with or a fill cotton thread because it's the only cotton I use. It's the only cotton I use. Actually, I think it's the only cotton I've ever used. So that's not even because, full disclosure, I am an Aurifil artisan, which means I'm one of their, um, I'm one of the people in the industry they work with. I do blog posts for them. They send me thread for it. That's what Aurifil artisan means. So I don't want you to think like, oh, she's talking great about Aurifil because she works with them. Um, it always works for me. 
So <laughs> Lynn said, I'm sneaking in this class while working remotely. We won't tell anyone. Shh. <laughs> Nobody will rat you out. <laughs> so that's what I want to say first and foremost. I've had some people say, well, you said this about cotton. And then when I work with blah, 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 blah thread, it does. I had a lot of issues. I'm so sorry. Um, at this point, I have I am no help in regards to other brands um, and how those brands work on your machines. Um, I don't know what LQS means. Oh, local quilt shop. The local quilt shop. Um, I don't even, oh, I don't know that brand, Sue. Hi, everybody. Say hi if you're here. I'd love to know that you're here, by the way. Um, say hi at any time. Okay, so tell me, tell me this again, Sue. So the local quilt shop you use for embroidery threads sells Robinson Anton? I don't, I don't know that machine. I don't know that thread at all. I've never even heard of it. Um, I use, I've used Floriani. I've used Isocord. I've used um, Orifil. I've used, have I used Mettler? I think I've used Mettler polyester. Um, the only cotton I've used for embroidery is Orifil. And, um, but yeah, I mean, all the other brands say you can work with them. I just can't speak to that. I just can't tell you tips on how to get the best results with everything. Okay. So Eileen asked, what do I use in the bobbin? And funny enough, um, I actually use, this is, <laughs> I fell on the floor. Um, this is OESD bobbin thread expert embroidery thread. And I use that in the bobbin. I use that in the bobbin, no problem. So I have cotton up top and polyester in the bobbin. This is a rule that I am breaking. This is a rule that I am breaking. It's usually like this. You shouldn't use a mix like this, but I do. And I haven't had any issues with it. But if you start to have issues, thread breaks, blah, 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 then go ahead and use cotton in the bobbin and cotton up top. Another thing that I have used with great success with cotton up top is, um, I don't know where I have that, so I won't go on a hunt for it, but um, Orifil actually has 80 weight, and I have used 80 weight, because typically bobbin weight thread is 60 weight, so it's even lighter that way, um, but yeah, I, I've had success with both of those. Remember, know the rules so you can break the rules. And what that really means is if you know what the rules are and then we start breaking rules, then we know those are the first things we want to walk back, right? Those are the first things like if I'm using these together, polyester and the bobbin, cotton up top, and I'm starting to have tension issues, bobbin issues, um, thread breakage, that would be my first thing I would check out because I know I'm doing something a little rebellious. Okay, tons of questions. Let me see. Um, so what bobbin thread? That's what I'd use. Um, you can also use, I could do a bobbin full of this, use it up top and in bottom. I could use 40 weight in the bobbin, 50 weight up top. It, yeah. Um, but this is part of what I want to talk about um, because I went from my 880 where I never had an issue to my 790 where I had some issues. And I was like, oh crap, you're giving people um, advice based off your 880. And I had a little bit of um, an epiphany, I had an epiphany. So yeah. Hi, Julie. Hi, Orlando. Okay. Special applications. Lynn, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, special applications for using Orifil cotton thread. Do you mean like times where you should only use Orifil cotton thread or times where um, unique ways to use it? I would say one of the unique ways to use 
Orophil cotton thread is once we get into 12 weights. Um, they have such a range that using a 12 weight Orophil cotton, using a 12 weight wool from Orophil is oh, it's gorgeous. It takes some playing around with. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to read through these. Um, how about cotton and steel by Sulky? I have no idea. I have never used it. Sorry, that's Alfred. Can you hear my sister? Shh. <laughs> um, I have never used it. I've heard that you can use it um, from Sulky. So I have no idea. Um, I would try it the heck out though. I would try it out. You can always, if you're nervous about using a brand, um, especially if it's like specialty thread, try something like a quilting design first. So it's nice and open. There aren't tons of stitches and go slow. That's it on a test piece of fabric. Then from there, you'll be able to figure out um, how it works. <laughs> I just saw Orlando's comment. Business on top, party on the bottom. I was such bad dancing, but you have to like, give me a break because I can't really move a whole lot or else the, oh, the camera didn't do it. Anyway, just give me a break. Give me a break on the bad dancing. Um, would you use the mix of threads if it was an item that was going to be laundered lots? You know, I did. I did. That one right there. Um, my cardigan. My cardigan has polyester in the bottom and cotton up top. I'm trying to think the shirt that I have, my red one where I, I did it on the yoke, that is black up top and black in the bottom. So I'm sorry, that is cotton up top, cotton in the bobbin. I'm pretty sure. Um, but I do, I do know that I have some blog posts coming up that will be um, kind of talking about the wash and wear and showing some examples of them. Um, mm -hmm. Hi, Kate. Just wanted to add the machines can be finicky and only absolutely. So Karen, I love this. Machines can be finicky and dislike threads. Um, this expert embroidery thread actually is not really great in all machine brands is what I hear. I have bobbin thread. Um, I have bobbin thread called bottom line. Oh, here it is. So thank you, Karen. Thank you. Um, expert embroidery thread from OESD is a little more fuzzy. It's got a lot of, and that helps grab the, um, the top thread and pull it to the back. But I have heard that some machine brands don't like this as much but Bernina loves it. Bernina loves it. You should be using this in a Bernina. Then there's bottom line, and this is really smooth. This is a bobbin thread um, or like for invisible applique and things like that. I hate this stuff. Lynn asked, uh, what's a brand I always avoid? I have spools and spools of this and I freaking hate it. <laughs> I really do. I really hate it. So, um, you do want to be, the only problem I have with that is when I started working with, um, when I started at a Bernina dealership, there was a rumor that Orifil was terrible in Berninas. And I believed it. And I stayed away from Orifil for a long time. And then I got a set of um, Orifil to try out at a quilt show. And I was trying it out and, you know, having no problem with it. None. No problem with it. And I thought, I bet that if I had just tried it and kind of messed around with it. So I totally agree with Karen that there are threads that are more, that are better suited to certain machines. Um, but make sure that you're getting that information from a reliable source. Make sure. Um, 
OESD is the one who told me like, oh, these work great in uh, Bernina machines. Sometimes other brands, um, it doesn't perform as well. So just make sure that you are working. When you get this information, it's not hearsay from the Quilt Guild. You know, um, it's not. The problem is, is sometimes we listen to people who really don't know how to use their machines anyway. Oops. I do that a lot. I listen to people too much. Too much. Come on. Uh, hello. How are you, my dear? So Lynn said, what's the worst brand you always avoid? Um, so I told you that I don't like bottom line in my Bernina. Mm -mm. I hated it. I hated working with it. I used it as a top thread and as a bobbin thread. Um, not at the same time, but I have used it in the bobbin and I have used it up top and I hate it. I hate it. Hate it. I like isocord polyester thread. Um, I use isocord and orifil because they're great every time. I had, I spent a lot of money on a hundred pack of Floriani and I do not like Floriani. People really like Floriani because it's so shiny, um, but it has a tendency to shred and it's frustrating. So I don't know if it's, I don't want to say it's the worst brand or anything, <laughs> but if I were to say a brand that I will not purchase anymore, I would say bottom line, I wouldn't purchase. And I would say that Floriani, I wouldn't purchase. I'd go out of my way to get, I do in fact, go out of my way to get Isocord. Um, I order it through OESD instead of going down the street to the store that has Floriani. So yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Come out. <laughs> My mouth doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Sometimes um, I have been stuttering a lot today and just a mess. <laughs> but anyway, yes, I agree. It's the only thread to use. The only thread. The only thread. Okay, so let's talk about some of these things that I have found recently. Um, because the blog post goes through a lot of this stuff, what we use in the top, what we use in the bobbin. When I was on my 880, I had no problem. I just started using Orifil thread. I didn't do anything different. Um, I didn't do anything different. I just had it away I went. Then I came over to my 790 because my 880 needs to go to the doctor. And it did not work. Like it really did not work. Um, I have ignore this stuff falling over. Um, let's see if we can see this. So this is Orifil on my 880 embroidering. Looks great. And this was on my 790. Horrible. You can see all those gaps in there. I mean, whole sections that missed. And I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. Why? Why would it be that different? Um, I didn't change anything. I just, I kind of works great on there. Came over here. This is when I started to notice um, this is when I, I would put it together because I kept saying, I haven't done anything different. I haven't done anything different, but I did. I didn't think about it until I went back into my machine. This machine um, has always been a little wonky. It was a test machine, um, like a classroom machine, but then they sent off to me and she's always been a little special. Well, because of that, I have the, the Bob intention set much higher than a normal 880 or than what my 790 has. So I changed needles, which is always a good thing to change if you're having tension issues. I went from a 7511 to an 8012 and that got better. Um, I played with top tension. I loosened it some, it worked a little, not really. Um, and then I realized the bobbin tension. 
So when I realized the bobbin tension, if you're in a machine where you can adjust your bobbin tension, like the 880, you can adjust it right in the machine. That would be a good thing to do. On my 790, I can't adjust the bobbin tension, but I can use, they have a different bobbin case that you use, a high tension bobbin case. It's beautiful, it worked great, it helped take care of my issues. So, um, I have heard from other people in other brands because I asked around, I started asking, is there anything special you do? And everybody who wrote back to me, and I'm still asking, I still have feelers out there. Um, actually, I'll get into the, um, Kimona is also a Aurifil artisan with me. So I'll get into our Aurifil artisan group and talk about, you know, how does a machine embroidery work for you with the Aurifil? Um, and actually, I'll ask you right now, Kimona, what is, do you have any issues? Have you, have you embroidered with Aurifil and do you do anything different for your machine? That's what I'd like to know. Um, somebody who's on a Janome um, who works for Aurifil said that all they do is, I believe she said 50 weight up top and 40 weight in the bobbin. Oh wait, other way around? Let me look, I'll look. Um, Tanisha asked, did you mention what weight you use already? I technically use all the weights. Um, I mostly have 50 weight, so that's the orange spool. It's kind of classic Aurifil, but I also use 40 weight. These are interchangeable for like any of your basic embroidery needs. Um, let me see what Hillary said. Hillary said. Um, so she said she uses 50 weight in the bobbin and I believe if she uses weight up top. So right there, I mean, obviously not these colors, but um, Here's the cool thing about bobbin thread. This is a little bit of an aside. Bobbin thread, you can just get black and white, black, white, gray. Um, because if your tension is correct, the top threads will wrap around to the back, right? And your embroidery bobbin thread will only show about this much. Um, let's say this is the back of our lettering or whatever. Only this much of it, that's really hard to see, but only this much of it would be bobbin thread. The top thread is going to pull underneath, um, which is really, that's good tension for embroidery. You want it to wrap to the back a little bit, not like quilting where you want the locks to meet into the batting. Lynn, hello, Lynn. I, okay, so this is a great question because we're kind of talking what I normally do and then what I what I adjusted to. What I normally do with this 880, the way I embroidered, did I embroider that on the 880? I think so. The way I embroidered this, that, most things that I have embroidered have been on the 880. I use 7511 needles. Here's a packet that is soaked because my sister's cat spilled my coffee. He likes to drink coffee. So he knocks over coffee. <sighs> okay. So I use 7511 needles. I use OESD bobbin thread. I use Aurifil up top. And my, my machine was set to a, hi Alfie, go lay down. Yeah, you can go lay down. Um, my machine was set to a tighter bobbin tension. So um, I typically, I almost always use 7511s to the point where that can get me in trouble because I can just go on autopilot. Um, so if I'm having weird tension issues, I will go into a, a 8012 kind of as my first line of defense before I start messing with everything. Um, do I have an affiliate link for Aurifil? I do not. I don't. Um, let me find, let me find information on that. I really should. I have an affiliate link for Isocord thread <laughs> for anyone in the U S. Um, Kimona said when I first started to embroider on my Bernina, I only used Aurifil and never had any problems. 
use 50 weight on the top and bobbin. And maybe, you know, that might be my problem. Um, trying to think because I also just, uh, let's be honest, I really freaking didn't want to do this anyway. I didn't want to do it anyway. So I stopped. <laughs> um, And I'm trying to, no, because when I first started, sorry, I have to reach back into the, the recesses of my mind. When I first started to embroider, it was on my 790 and it was Aurifil in top, up top and in bobbin. And I think you're right. I think you're right, Kaimona. I think I just did black. Embroidery thread top and bobbin and had no issues. So you think I'd listen to my own advice, but I don't. Um, my advice being when you're breaking the rules and things go wrong, the first thing you should look at is the rule you're breaking. And I don't know that I did that with that. Maybe I did. Oh, um, all in all, it's super easy to start embroidering with cotton thread. I have had a ton of people tell me that their dealer said they can't do it. Um, they assumed they can't do it because dealers don't talk about it. Um, and I don't really understand that, quite frankly. Part of the mantle that I am taking up uh, with Tough Kitten Crafts is to undo a lot of the uh, misinformation that's out there. Because there is a lot of misinformation and I don't think people are spreading it on purpose. Um, I think embroidery is a big undertaking and stores repeat what they hear or whatever. And we just kind of perpetuate a lot of myths about machine embroidery. And at first I was really gentle about it. <laughs> And now I'm a little more sassy about like, do not pull on that fabric. I'm sorry they told you to. Don't do it. And I have to get sassy, by the way. None of y'all here, none of my people, but there are people who will message me that saw me once on Instagram and be like, that's not true. You're, that's not true. And I'm like, yeah, it is. It is. Be less afraid of cutaway. Um, I want my misinformation. Uh, tearaway is good for beginners. No. Uh -uh. Tearaway should be used in special situations. If you want a um, embroidery stabilizer that's good for basically everything, get heavyweight cutaway. Get heavyweight cutaway. Um, get all cutaways. If you want your embroidery to look good, get all heavyweight cutaways. <laughs> I mean, get all cutaways. Poly mesh. I was making videos. Poly mesh. Um, a fusible woven, heavyweight cutaway, stable stick cutaway. There are certain things like tea towels, like some tea towels, some tea towels. Um, if we're doing like red work and stuff that you don't want to see, you want to tear away. You don't want to see all that on the back. Um, but like our hand towels and stuff, I wish I could implore more people to not give a crap about what the back of it looks like. I'm a one woman crusade against this. <laughs> so um, let's see. Oh, someone just commented. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And you know, it's really, okay. Story time. When I started crocheting, I had to do it. It was, I'm that weird generation that has one foot in analog one foot in digital. So I remember having to bring floppy disks to school, but I also had an email address by the time I was 10. So I'm in a weird, I mean, I'm really grateful for it, but I'm in a funny in between, right? Being born in 1989. Um, so when I learned to crochet, point being, there was no YouTube. YouTube wasn't a thing yet. And I had to use books. And every book I looked at I could not get what was happening. My embroidery had, my crochet had ridges in it and it looked 
horrible. So one day we were in um, Savannah. We went to Savannah every year for Thanksgiving. We were in Savannah and I was crocheting in line waiting for Lady and Sons, Paula Dean's restaurant. And we were crocheting in line waiting for our, for our name to be called. And a woman next to me, she was, I think she was like 89 years old. She said, oh my gosh, I didn't know young people crocheted. I was like 14. Yeah, 14, 15. I didn't know young people crocheted. This is so good. And I said, can you teach me how? Because it's not going well. And she was like, oh, yeah, sure. Let me show you. And so she showed me blah, blah, blah. The next day, and she showed me and it went really well and I could do it in that moment. Then I went back to my book and I started learning it again. It was not going well. We sat in a coffee shop and her little sample looked so good. I swear there's a point to this story. Her little sample looked so good and my little sample looked terrible. Great. We sat in a coffee shop. This guy said, oh, you're crocheting? I crochet. And I said, I am having the hardest time. He said, all I want to do is learn this. And every book I look at confuses me more. And he says to me, that's because all the books are wrong. I was like, crochet conspiracy theories. He said, all the books are wrong. And I was like, can you explain this better? And he goes, I will show you. He wrote on the exact page where the information was wrong. And he goes, for some reason, every crochet book tells you to go into one loop. You're supposed to go into two loops. I don't know why it does that. Let me get you started. So we sat there together and we got started. And then he was right. Every book I looked at after that, they weren't correct. I don't know. Or the information was bad. It was hard to understand. Whatever. I feel the same way about machine embroidery. Here's the tie-in. I feel the same way about machine embroidery. I feel like the information that is out there is perpetuated by people who have had to figure it out themselves. There's information out there that's just flat wrong. And I don't see enough people correcting it and correcting it with like their whole chest. So I want to be that person for y'all. I want to be the person who comes in and says, stop using tearaway. Don't buy tearaway. I wish none of our stores sent us home with tearaway. They did it to me too. Um, I wish all of our stores told us that cutaway is going to give us the best results possible. Start there. I wish all of our stores told us not to pull on our fabric, not to stretch things out of shape. Um, talked more about needles, talked more about different threads. I'm just not seeing it. And I hope that there are some of you, um, anytime I say this, I get a lot of people who say, not my store. My store was very good about it. And I hope that all of you have stores that were very good about it. But I know you don't. <laughs> I know you don't. So all of this to say, thank you, Francie Jo. She said she sees people on YouTube pulling on the fabric. And she tells them, don't do it. Don't pull on that fabric. Together, we are going to change this industry and get the real information out there. Now I sound like a cult leader. I'm not, well, maybe a little bit. I mean, maybe, but we're going to get the good info out there. So long aside back to what we're really talking about. And sorry, I shouldn't slam these on the table where my microphone is. Does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns about the thread they're using for machine embroidery? The great news about Aurifil is that they have so many weights. Um, a blog post is coming out from me about all the different weights and how to use them in embroidery. Um, I'm creating my content calendar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My content calendar for the year. And that's definitely on it. Um, so y'all can be adventurous with this. Because I know Sue, if Sue's still here, Sue always says, like, I want somebody to make me excited about machine embroidery. And I want to be that person for every last one of you. For every last one of you. If you aren't excited about it now, I want to make you excited about it. And I want to help you know exactly what you need to know. What about metallic thread? Okay. Metallic thread can be a pain in the butt. 
but I think it's got a bad rap. I think it's not as bad um, as people make it out to be. Don't do a whole design in metallic thread. So metallic thread coils really tightly, most metallic threads. Um, so you can, there's a few things you can do. You can use a, I love you guys. You guys are the best, um, all these questions. So you, when you're using your metallic spool, you may want to use a stand and set it far away from your machine. Not far, not across the, not across the whole um, room like some people will do, but just set it on a standalone thread stand out to the back of your machine. Give it a little more space to uncoil. Um, you'll want to use a metallic needle. It helps. I wouldn't do a whole design with metallic thread. I would use it for, you're going to be happier if you use it for outlines, if you use it for little glimmers and glints and glittery parts. Um, if you're going to do like a whole huge design in metallics, you could end up not happy. But once again, I've used regular bobbin thread. Um, when I do that, definitely don't use metallic in the bottom. Definitely don't. Um, and definitely polyester. Polyester for sure. With metallics, there is another thing I was going to say. Oh, I know. There is a thread brand called Glide. And it's for long arming, mostly. Um, but anything that's for... Most things... I'll say anything, but with an asterisk. So like, don't come after me if you use something and it doesn't work. Anything that's for long arm quilting is going to be just as useful for machine embroidery because it is made to go at high speeds. Okay. Sewing thread. And most people don't like, I don't think any brands are going to say we're for sewing, not for machine embroidery. Um, but that's why you can get away with sewing things that you can't get away with threads for sewing. And then you put it in embroidery and it doesn't work. It's because that embroidery, that thread, however they make it, is not made to go through the machine that fast, through the needle that fast, through your fabric that fast. And it'll cause a problem. So most times, um, so if it says it's good for long arming, you can try it out on uh, machine embroidery as well. So. Having said that, Glide is really awesome. It is very shiny. If you want more shine like Floriani, then go to Glide. I like Glide a lot. Um, and their gold, silvers, um, grays, they're all almost metallic, but they're easier to use. That's why I brought them up right now. So shiny, so nice, such great color, not actually metallic, super easy to use. Okay. Do, do, do. I lost some of my questions here. One sec, one sec. Francie Joe said, it's difficult to find Aurifil here at limited colors. I know. And you know, with Aurifil, we do get into that issue, especially right now during COVID. Um, we do get into the issue of, I mean, I guess, where is, where is Isocord? doesn't say where ice cord comes from anyway. Um, there is that issue of it coming from overseas, right? It comes from Italy, or if it does. So especially right now during COVID, it can be difficult to get a hold of, difficult for your dealers to get a hold of, so difficult for you to get a hold of. Um, doo -doo -doo. <laughs> um Noemi said, and hi, Noemi, said, do you really have to use Aurifil in the bobbin or can you get away with the Aurifil in the bobbin? I get away with Aurifil in the bob, uh, with OESD in the bobbin, no problem. I use 50 weight up top, Aurifil in the bobbin, and I have not had trouble with that. Um, and if I do have trouble with it on my Bernina, I don't know if other brands have anything like this, but on my Bernina, I can use the gold bobbin case and the gold bobbin case will tighten up that bobbin thread enough that we'll be fine and I'll have no problem. Um, Noemi, what I was saying is, since we're breaking the rules of polyester in the bobbin and cotton up top, if something goes wrong, then switch to cotton in top and cotton in bobbin. 
hopefully that fixes it for you. Do, do, do. Sue said she normally orders Orphil from Amazon because it's hard to get a hold of too. So there you go. Um, I know um, Kelly who was asking about the affiliate link. She lives like down the street from me, funny enough. And our local quilt shop got rid of all the Orphil. I went and bought up a ton of it. Um, oh, that's when I had to look this guy in the face. Um, it's when I was doing the oh, toilet paper and I was doing a poop emoji and I had to look him in the face when he said, um, because this is the beginning of COVID and I can't look through all the colors. I said, I need a brown. And he goes, okay, well, I have a few different browns here. What kind of brown do you think? And I said, like a, like a medium brown. And he goes, well, I have this or this. And I said, I need poop emoji brown. <laughs> and to look a human in the eye and say that. And he just busted out laughing and said, well, I think it's this one. <laughs> and I said, I think that's a good call. <sighs> Hi, Lynette. What are you sewing, Lynette? Lynette forgot I was on, but she's busy sewing. You know, doing good things then. I'm glad. I'm glad you were in like hyper focus, knocking stuff out. So Karen says, oh, yes, yes, yes. That's a great suggestion, Karen. I don't know where mine is. I don't know where mine are. Um, so Karen was saying there's a little sleeve that you can uh, purchase that goes over your cone of thread that keeps it from spooling off too fast. This is particularly important for the isochords. Um, or any polyesters because they're so slick they just spool off so fast if you're having tension issues um, your thread comes out of your tension discs really easily um, your machine is telling you that you don't have thread top thread but you know you do have top thread then you want to put a thread net on let me just see one more second i don't think i have one oh i do Okay, I'm going to feel like a health teacher right now, but so we have our spool. You can put it, um, actually, I'd probably go this way. You're going to put your thread net over. I do it through the bottom so that that my thread, I look like a health teacher, right? With a banana. Um so my thread hangs out the bottom. I put it over the bottom is how I tend to do it. Yeah, I feel like a health teacher. Um, you let it kind of hang off the top a little bit and then tuck it underneath and then you can put it on your spool pin. Um, you can put it on the upright if you need to, if you're, you wouldn't need to on your machine, but you might need to on your, um, thread stand off the back, but that's how a thread net works. And then it helps um, make it so that your thread doesn't spool off so quickly. Oh my gosh. So that was a great tip, Karen. Um, thread nets are like so inexpensive and really useful to have around. Once again, particularly for polyester thread because they're so silky smooth. Francie, Joe, and Sue chatting about, sorry, I moved my head too much. Focus. Um, Francie, Joe, and Sue talking about Orophil on Amazon. Many colors, but yes, expensive. You know, there's a world in which, there's a world one day, and I'm going to go ahead and cast this vision, and who knows if it'll happen, but there's a world one day where I will have these things available for y'all online so that we can, um, you can just get all the stuff you need right through me. Okay. Kimona said, yes, the gold bobbin case is amazing for Orville 12 weight. Oh. I need more information about that. I need more information about that. Kimona. 
you're using the 12 weight, the gold bobbin case when you're embroidering with the 12 weight thread. I need more info. I'm so excited about that. Lynn said toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like toilet paper. Is there a right way and a wrong way? Um, listen, I have a very strong opinion about toilet paper and which way the toilet paper should come off the roll. I think it needs to come over at you so it's greeting you. It's easier. Um, I do not have that kind of an opinion about the horizontal spool or the vertical spool. People always tell you, and people even tell you with Berninas, they'll say you have to use the vertical spool. You have to use the horizontal spool. I always use the horizontal spool and I have not have, had any issues. Um, I hate the vertical spool on the machines. So if you feel like your thread is feeding weird, I would get a stand for that. I just think they work better. I hate this. I, it mines up right now. Um, I'm guessing because I put that on there, my little um, thread cap. I, I just do everything horizontal. It all turns out fine. Yeah, and away I go. Oh yeah, uh, Karen said, Another wonderful point. Karen said that thread nets are great for metallic threads. So, doo, doo, doo. and yeah, this one, um, I believe this one came with my Bernina because it's so much shorter. Uh, ones that you buy will be about twice this length and you can cut them in half. Um, yeah, they just come like this little thread net. So I, I think your uh, Karen also said many machines come with a couple of thread nets. I think this is one that came with my machine. Ta-da! Okay. Oh, so Lynn, with that, um, the whole right way for it to come off the spool, I don't worry about it. I don't worry about it. You'll find that I worry about as little as possible. <laughs> uh, maybe that's my anxiety. Um, I have a lot of just inherent anxiety. Um, so things like sewing, I promised myself early on that I would not be anxious about it. I want to do a good job and I want to guide you to do a really good job. But I am Definitely not the embroidery police. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Um, anything else I should say about cotton thread? I don't think so. I use the same dang stabilizers. I have used it on faux leather, which is plastic. I have used it on cotton, on linen on knits, on, that might be it, felt. I've used it on a lot of stuff and I haven't had any issues. None, 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 none. Okay, this is great to know Eileen because I have never used this. Um, so Eileen's talking about the attachment. Bernina machines come with an attachment that um, oils the metallic thread before it enters your discs. So making it a little easier to use. Um, and if you aren't in a Bernina, because I am not Bernina exclusive in this group, um, if you aren't in a Bernina, there may, uh, your machine brand may have something similar. I know that like our sergers have decorative thread spools, things like that. So if you're not in a Bernina, if you're one of my Bernina people, use the uh, metallic thread attachment. If, you, if you're into Bernina, use that. If you're not, ask your local dealer about it or whoever you talk to. You can probably order it online. With Bernina, we can never order things online. I know everybody's got feelings about that. I have complicated feelings about that. I don't think it's a bad thing, but also... I wish that I could order stuff online. Yeah, 
You know, I have never used it. I got to use more of these things. But that's part of what I want to do this year is make sure that I'm kind of, I can get very, um, I think anybody can. Or maybe some of y'all unicorns out there don't do this. Um, Kimono would be a unicorn because she's always doing something creative and amazing and jumping out of her comfort zone all the time and trying new things, even with old hobbies. It is awesome. But um, I'm going to put her Instagram up there so you can go find her. Um, but that's part of what I'm going to practice this year is really making sure that I try these different things and kind of come back to report about it. So I love it. I love it. Do, do, do. I love her so much. <laughs> KT power for sure. Um, oh gosh, I think I'm done. I don't think I have anything more to say about this specifically. Um, you got to practice with it. Like I said, I use 50 weight. There is the, um, I just realized this. I just realized this thing that pops up at the bottom of my page is not correct. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I've used every weight, 80 weight, 50 weight, 40 weight, 28 weight, 12 weight, 12 weight wool and 12 weight cotton blend. Um, you can do all of it. So just, this is definitely something where you want to practice and play. Oh, there's linen. Um, Oh, there's even a little, I didn't even realize there's a little, um, kind of pennant type project in that blog post. Um, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah. Da -da -da. I want you all to go follow Kimona Tracy because she's awesome and so creative. Whew, so creative. So. Any other questions, y'all? Next week, I don't know what we're talking about next week, um, but I will still be here at 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. If you got the email, um, I sent an email out tonight that said, um, that sent you a reminder, in an hour we'll be live. So if you got that reminder, and you were excited about it, then I want you to sign up at this landing page if you haven't done that already, okay? Um, let me get you the landing page. But if you don't care to hear about it, you don't, you don't want to know when I'm going live, then don't worry about it. Just don't sign up for this. You will not be told in the future when I'm going live. It can just be a surprise for you. You can come watch it on YouTube at a later time. Whatever works for you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get you all the link in case you don't have it yet. Lynette is making... <laughs> oh. Lynette is making a quilt that's a bit too challenging. <laughs> I'm so Sorry. I'm so sorry. That's tough. Um, let me do this the proper way. Get email reminders for when I go live. Perfect. There you go, Lynn. Okay. There you go, Lynn. There's the information on how to get the email reminders. I will remind you an hour before I go live and I will have the information on what topic we are talking about so that um, you know what's up. I'm realizing I think my makeup's giving up on me. <laughs> yes, no envy follows Kaimona. Oh, it's wonderful. She's great. She does do all kinds of crafts, all sorts of wonderful things. Bernina Ambassador and Orifel Artisan. Just saying. Just saying. 
Um, I have projects. So like I said, I am coming up with the content for this year. If you have requests, specific requests, get into my inbox, info at toughkittencrafts.com. Um, Lynette came up with a great idea and we have that coming up. Um, different stitches, uh, learning about the different stitches in embroidery. If you have, um, yay, Tanisha. Um, if you have, oh man. Oh. Found more coffee from where the cat knocked it over. Bless it. <laughs> so if you have requests, we are going to be doing embroidery alongs. There are going to be a lot of projects, projects that we can do together. Um, we are going to have, uh, oh, you know what else I should do? Check out the Pin, Tuck, and Pearl classes coming up. Um, there are project-based classes as well as um, project-based classes as well as like learn to embroider. So this Saturday, I'm doing virtual embroidery 101. This is for you if you don't, you haven't really done any embroidery on your own yet. I'm going to teach you how to do quilting cotton, make it perfect. Um, this is for anybody who um, has done quilting cotton at home and it turns out puckery and weird. This is for anybody who wants their hands held at first. It's a great class for that. We're also doing um, a mug rug. So that's a class-based project. We are embroidering a Valentine's Day card. In the hoop Valentine's Day card. There is a key fob coming up as well. And then a six week learn to embroider. Six week learn to embroider. Um, that is everything. That's how to do stretch, denim, um, using washaways, doing sheer fabrics. That's learning everything. So do, do, do. let me get this in here. It's all virtual. It's all virtual. It's all East Coast time, East Coast of the USA. Um, so just let check it out there. Let me know if you have questions about that as well. Are you doing Orifil Color Builders? I am actually not doing Orifil Color build Builders. I didn't get signed up in time. <laughs> to be quite honest, I will do some of the Orifil Color Builders. Let's say that. I don't think I have the attention span. And I know it's one a month, but all I got to say is ADHD is hard and I don't have that much of a attention span. Uh, Noemi, this is the one that you're looking for, the six week one. That's the one right there. So learn to machine embroider is the six week class and it is awesome. It's awesome. Towels, minky, sheer fabrics. Um, stretch fabric, denim, sweatshirts, fleece. Yeah, it's good. It's very good. It's very good. I think this time we're going to do like flower sack towels as well. So that'll be fun. Okay, everybody. Oh, 9 p.m. on the nose. Does anybody else have any questions before I head out? I haven't done dinner yet. It's 9 o'clock and I haven't eaten dinner yet. Y'all would be so proud of me. I was in bed by 11 o'clock last night. What? What? I'll be live next week. I will let you know the second I know what it is. I will let you know when I know. And right now I don't know. <laughs> oh, Diana, hello. You got logged in just in time for it to be over. Thank you, Francie Joe. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Diana, you've been watching but not logged in. Is that what you mean? I didn't realize people could watch without without um logging in. That's good. It's good to know. Well, I appreciate all of you. Hop in some of those classes if you want to learn about machine embroidery. Uh, the 780 have a special bobbin. I believe 780... I believe 780 uses the same bobbin as 
you have that bobbin, right? Um, that means that you can use the red bobbin and you can use the gold bobbin as well. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Bye, Eileen. Have a good week too. Yeah, so Diana, you can use this one. You can use the red bobbin and then the gold bobbin is the high tension bobbin case for embroidery. So, oh, that he loves coffee, Sue. Sue said, keep that cat out of the coffee. The other day we heard somebody crunching on something and we turned around and there was a coffee bean on the floor and he was eating it. He he's addicted like any human. So now I have to go clean this whole area up, which really isn't a bad thing. Yolanda. <sighs> Hi, Yolanda. We're done. You can start over. If you're watching this at a later date, this is also for Yolanda and Diana. I'm going to put this in the Facebook group. You can watch it there. Um, you can comment there. Or you can comment here and I will try to get back to you. Okay? I love y'all. I love you. I miss you. <laughs> See you soon. See you soon. See you on the 20th. The 20th I will be live here 8 p.m. Eastern. The 25th, Monday the 25th, I'm going to start doing mornings on Instagram. So. My cats drink oat milk. Oh. He loves this coffee and he, so annoying. So I'm going to go clean that up. Bye, everybody. Mwah.